Welcome to Foundational You with Dr. Dean Hackett, the home of biblical teaching and cultural impact. We are so glad that you joined us for today's podcast. You can find out more about Dr. Dean, read his blog, and find more episodes at fdeanhackett.com. Now for today's episode. In view of the current events that have been happening in the nation of Israel, I felt it very important that we study a biblical theology of Israel and the Jewish people. Unless you've been living on planet Mars, you're very aware of the things that have been happening in the Middle East and in Israel since October 7th, 2023. And the ensuing war between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis uh, in Yemen. All of this uh, being proxied by the nation of Iran. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Syria, the Iranian guard that's in Syria, all of these are proxies of the nation of Iran perpetrating a war upon Israel. And no doubt you have heard the statement from the river to the sea and uh, being, being said over and over again. All of the protests that are happening on the university campuses here in the United States. What is happening and, and, and why is this taking place? No doubt you're, you're hearing some scathing reports regarding the nation of Israel, that Israel is an occupier of the land <clears throat> and that it rightfully belongs to the Palestinians that Israel started the war, uh, seeming to ignore the details of what took place on October 7th. And you may have heard that Israel is an apartheid nation, again, seeming to ignore the facts that uh, Muslims and Arab people have full rights of citizenship inside the nation of Israel, and, and that previous to the war, that those living in Gaza would, by the thousands, were coming across the border, working in Israel, and then going back to their home in Gaza. It's very interesting what we're seeing happening. So we have to ask, what should be the thoughts and position of a Christian concerning Israel? Now, I'm not talking about the left or the right position politically, Uh, uh, or Democrat or Republican. This is not a political issue. This is a biblical issue. What What is God's word say about Israel and about the Jewish people? So let's start with the most basic foundation stone. God made a covenant with a man named Abram. Abram grew up uh, in the uh, Mesopotamian Valley in Ur of Chaldee. His father moved from Ur to Haran, and, uh, and then uh, Abram lived in Haran, married a woman named Sarai. But Almighty God spoke to him. Now, Abram and all of his family and all of the culture worshipped the moon god and but somehow in some way and we're not told how he came in connection with almighty god the living god and almighty god called him and sarai to leave their home in haran and to move to the land that almighty god would show him which happened to be the land of canaan And when he got to Canaan, Almighty God made promises to Abram. Those promises that God made to Abram are found in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, where God told Abram that he was going to bless him and would make him a great nation, and that out of his descendants would come nations, and they would be great, and they would be blessed and that he was going to bless him. God was going to bless Abram and all of his descendants after him. And that Almighty God would uh, 
would make his name great and would bring kings and rulers out of his descendants and they would establish nations. Almighty God said he would bless those that bless Abram and Abram's descendants and those that cursed Abram and cursed his descendants would be cursed. This was God's promise to him right at the very beginning. And then God said, this land that I'm going to show you, I'm going to give it to you and to your descendants. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, God said to him, Do not fear, Abram, for I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abram then asked him and said, Well, you, you have promised me that you're going to bless me, that the nations are going to come out of me, and, and, uh, but I still don't have an heir. My heir right now is my chief steward. And, uh, and you've, not, you've not given me a son. And yet you've said that out of, out of my descendants is going to come nations and you're going to bless my descendants. Almighty God then, in, in the latter part of chapter 15, God made a covenant with Abram. And in that covenant, this is recorded in verses 17 and 18. In that covenant, God said, now understand something. Your descendants are going to spend 400 years in the land of Egypt, but then they're going to come back to this land of Canaan, and I have given them this land forever. It is theirs forever. We find it also recorded in Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 to 8, that God said to him, Abram, I'm going to bless your descendants. They're going to be great. And out of them are going to come many nations. I'm going to cause your people to be great. And I have given them this land forever. And he gave them the borders of the land that God gave them. The borders of that land go from the Mediterranean Sea. The northern border goes right across the southern border of what we know today as Lebanon. All the way through Syria, all the way to the Euphrates River. The southern border goes from the Mediterranean Sea through the Negev, across the uh, northern shore of the Red Sea a lot, through Jordan, through Saudi Arabia, all the way to the Euphrates River. God said, this is your land. This is the land I've promised to you and your descendants forever, forever it's their land. Wow, what a promise from Almighty God. But here's the unique thing. God has sealed this deed of promise. When God promised them the land, made the covenant to give them the land, he sealed that promise. How did he seal that promise? Multiple times in scripture, God said he's put his name there. He's put his name there. Well, has he indeed put his name there? And the answer is yes. When you look at a topographic uh, map of the city of Jerusalem, these are the things that stand out. On the east is the Mount of Olives. In the middle is the Temple Mount. Between the Temple Mount And the Mount of Olives is the Kidron Valley that runs north and south and then goes southeast towards the Dead Sea. West of the Temple Mount is another valley, the Tyropenean Valley. The Tyropenean Valley goes north and south and then goes southeast and connects to the Kidron Valley. Then you have the Old City. And then outside the walls of the old city is another valley that goes north and south and then goes southeast and connects with the Tyropenean Valley, which connects with the Kidron Valley. That valley on the west side is the Hinnom Valley. The Hinnom Valley was where the Jewish people worshipped the god Moloch. The Hinnom Valley connects to the Tyropenean Valley, which connects 
to the Kidron Valley and forms a perfect letter sheen. The letter sheen is the letter for the name of God, Yahweh. Yahweh. Almighty God has literally put his name in the city of Jerusalem in the center of the land of Israel, the land that God promised to the Jewish people forever as their inheritance forever. God promised them the land. It is their land forever. And God sealed that promise by putting his name there. Yes, yes, this is God's land that God gave to Israel. They are not occupiers. They are not invaders. They are taking possession of the land that God promised them over 3,000 years ago that God gave to them. It is the land that rightfully belongs to the Jewish people and to the nation of Israel. Wow, it starts there. That's the foundation stone. That is their land. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. It rightfully belongs to them. Wow, we're going to come back in our next study and we're going to look at, well, is this just an Old Testament thing or does it belong in the New Testament as well? How, how do we measure that? Wow. Thank you for joining me today in this study on a biblical theology of Israel and the Jewish people. I also want to remind you that uh, I have a DVD series that is 16 uh, DVDs, live recording, teaching on where are we on God's time clock. And uh, uh, I hope you will take advantage of this. You can purchase it on my website, fdeanhackett.com. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in our next study. Thank you for joining us today. This Christ-centered biblical training is a ministry of Spirit Life Ministries. We hope that you are blessed by this podcast and share it with your friends and colleagues. For more information or questions for Dr. Dean, please contact us at the website fdeanhackett.com.